It is January, the middle of winter for most of us. So what better time to do a video on the eight reasons why your honeybees will or won't make it through the winter. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to Whistle Thicket. We are in the bee yard and we are talking about how to keep your bees alive this winter and what's gonna kill your bees in the winter time. So I'm at my bee yard, I have five hives. Uh, this is my fourth year as a beekeeper. I've learned a lot. I've written a log book for beekeeping. It's on Amazon. Um, I have a master's degree in biology. Um, and I'm still learning. I think that's one of the biggest things about beekeeping is that you always want to get better and improve. Um, so again, like I said, we're going to talk about reasons your bees don't make it through the winter. The first one, um, and I guess this is important, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about, you can do something about. And sometimes you have to do it in the fall. Some of this you can do in the winter. And the important thing is that beekeeping is a science and it's an art. And I think a little bit of luck. So even if you do everything, sometimes you just don't get lucky and uh, your bees still aren't going to make it. So uh, especially if you're a new beekeeper, don't stop trying. If your bees don't make it this first year, um, I hope you don't quit because um, after a while, I think you get a, the, the hang of it and it's, it's just so enjoyable. So I'm hoping that if you're a new beekeeper and you're watching this, you're not going to give up. Okay. So first and foremost, you want to make sure you don't have a weak hive when you are going into the winter. So for me, I live in North Carolina, but in the mountains. So we have four or five snows. Um, we have freezing temperatures for several months at night at least. So that's the type of winter that I'm dealing with. Um, uh, you may live in a you know, more harsh environment for the winter, you may live in, you know, Florida where you don't really have a winter. Um, so this video may not be helpful if you live in Florida. Um, so if you have a really weak hive, a small hive, that's going to be a challenge the entire winter because that hive has to cluster together in order to stay warm, right? So I like to have bare minimum six to eight frames of bees in order to overwinter. If I have less than that, then I am probably going to combine two hives together. So I've had friends that have been, that have been successful overwintering nukes, which um, if I have to do that, I will, but I like to have six to eight frames again because if you start out with a small cluster, you are really gonna struggle most of the winter because those bees have to cluster together in order to generate warmth, right? So the bigger your hive can be, the better, as long as you're doing all these other steps as well. Okay, number seven, I think. Having a weak queen or no queen. So for me, in the fall, around Thanksgiving or sooner, I make sure, it's kind of my last fall inspection, I make sure that, um, I can find the queen in all of my hives. And really, I do this before Thanksgiving, more like Halloween. Um, so make sure you can find your queen because if you're missing a queen, even if your bees make another queen, your worker bees, she's probably not going to be able to mate in time and she's not going to be able to uh, be a successful queen. Number six, at least to me, is having blocked entrances. On most of my hives, I have entrance reducers. Um, I live where the snow is gonna melt in three or four days, but if it doesn't, I make sure to clean off those entrances because your bees on a warm day, they still need to go and do cleansing flights. Um, they can forage for water, for propolis, propolis. Um, so having those entrances cleared is really important. Um, Especially if you're in a northern latitude, um, a lot of people will have a top entrance, a higher entrance um, to avoid that snow. 
So make sure that you're clearing your entrances so that your bees can actually leave on a warm day for those cleansing flights. Okay, number five, I believe, or top eight, so this is number five. Um, it's not necessarily the cold, it's temperature differences, at least in my opinion. Um, if you live in a cold environment where it's always cold in the wintertime, your bees are probably not going to be breaking cluster that often. But where I live, it can be 60 during the day on a warm winter day and 20 at night. So my bees are probably going from cluster to uncluster during the day. And then at night they go back to their cluster. But if those temperature differences are really extreme, sometimes your bees may be out foraging um, or they may not cluster in time. So that's kind of a tough thing. Temperature differences, you got to deal with it. Um, there's a lot of people that will wrap their hives. I've never tried that. And part of me is nervous just because um, I feel like if you do it wrong, you'll make it too airtight, which can be a problem for number four, um, which is moisture. So moisture is... Uh, Another reason that bees do not survive the winter. Oh so yes, the cold can affect your bees and kill your bees in the winter, but really I think that goes back to having too small of a cluster. Um, but moisture, in my opinion, can really um, wreak havoc on your bees in, in the winter time because what typically happens is your bees are inside their hive and it's kind of like a mini weather system in there. They're working hard, they're breathing, um, and there's a lot of water vapor in there. It goes to the top of the hive, it condensates, and then it drips back down on the bees. Being cold is one thing. Being cold and wet is an entirely different story, and lots of bees can die from that. Um, I don't want to be outside and be cold and wet, and I don't really think my bees want to be inside their hive and be cold and wet. So this is what I've been doing for the past two years is I've made quilt boxes. So I'm gonna show you my quilt box and explain how it works. Hey. So here's one of my typical hives. I have a deep on the bottom and then I have a honey super and that honey super um, is filled with honey. Um, above it is my quilt box and I'm gonna show you the inside here. Here's the inside. The inside of it is filled with wood chips and then we have those ventilation holes. So what happens with a quilt box is the water is gonna go to the inside of our lid here and it's gonna condensate, but instead of dripping on the bees, it's gonna drip into the wood chips. And then I have these ventilation holes and that's gonna ventilate and dry out the wood chips. This has been pretty successful. Um, for the last two years I've done that and any hive that I've put a quilt box on has survived so far, which I know that's not great data for just two winters, but this is how I prevent moisture from killing my hives. Okay, next we're gonna talk about mites. Mites in the Southeast have been a pretty big problem in the Southern states. Uh, my first year of beekeeping, I lost my hives to mites. I have several friends in the area, they lost their hives to mites. I think a friend of mine lost 10 hives that year from mites and I treated that year. Um, there's some people that do treatment free and they say they're breeding bees to be mite resistant. I personally don't think the average beekeeper can really do that. I'm not trying to do that necessarily. Um, I want my bees to make it through the winter um, and then eventually, you know, they'll be adapted to the local environment a little bit, but I don't think the average beekeeper is a bee breeder um, and it's tough to do it's tough to do um, so this is what I do I treat with Formic Pro twice um, I treat in August and then I treat in October if it's not too cold I do the 20-day treatment where there's a single Formic Pro pad for 10 days and then the second one for another 10 days um, so they get a significant um, mite treatment and I think that's helped me. Um, I haven't lost a hive this year, even though we're only halfway through winter. Um, so we still got a long ways to go, but mites are definitely a big problem. So this may be obvious, but starvation is definitely a problem for bees. Um, a lot of times people, 
especially if you're a new beekeeper, you want to get honey. Sometimes you've waited um, two years to get honey, right? Um, I, um, I've had friends that it took them three years to get honey. So, right, you get greedy, you get anxious, and it's tough. Um, but if you don't leave your bees enough honey, that's why they make honey so they can survive um, harsh conditions, right? Um, if you take that honey away, it's going to be really, it's going to be really difficult for them. So again, I have a, um, a deep and a medium, and those are filled with honey. At least the medium super is. The deep has um, brood in it in the fall, and then on the sides in the deep are several frames of honey. So they probably have 50 or 60 pounds of honey. I also supplement with bee candy. And I will show you the bee candy real quick. Okay, here's the bee candy, people. It's real simple to make. It's just sugar, a little bit of water, and an even smaller amount, like a cap full of vinegar. Um, and that's what I do. And I let it dry for 24 hours or put it in the oven very, very low um, for like 20 minutes to kind of speed up that process. But this is my backup policy is bee candy. And all of my hives have... Um, candy cakes in them and I try to do that twice during the winter um, this is a backup plan right if it's a warm day the bees are gonna be active they're going to be eating more honey um, but really their primary source should be honey but that backup plan is there just in case they need it and your bees will thank you for it um, especially if you have a long winter um, it's really good to have that supplemental feed. I think we're on our number one reason that bees die in, in the winter time. And that reason is you. That's right, you. If you don't do all of these um, extras, your bees are going to have a lot harder time surviving. And on top of that, a lot of people, we're humans, we're curious, we want to help. We open up our hives way too much. Um, it doesn't matter if your bees are dead. If they're dead in December, they're going to be dead in February, people. If you keep on opening your hives to check on them on a warm day, then you run the risk of accidentally killing your queen or uh, you may break the cluster and they may not go back in time. So I try to open my hive as little as possible in the wintertime. I've only opened them twice and I haven't even really opened them. Um, I want to clarify this point. So this is my deep brood box and my medium super. I have not opened these two boxes since um, early December. When I say open, I mean I'm taking off um, my quilt box and underneath is where I have my sugar cakes. If you open these box, you're going to crack the propolis and it's very brittle when it's cold and it's not going to reform in those gaps again unless it's warm enough to uh, melt again, right? Well, not melt, but you know, it gets into those cracks. So if you're opening your hive too often, that's not a good thing. I haven't opened my hive since December from the medium to the deep. I only take off my quilt box, I put in my sugar candy, and that's it. Um, I know my bees are all alive because last time I put in the sugar candy was a warm day and they were all active. If it's a warm day above 50 degrees, you should be checking on your hive outside, not opening them up. Just go to your bee yard, look for activity, and if one of your hives isn't active, then I would be concerned. Um, especially if all, all of your other hives are active, then I would be concerned. But um, this is just my advice, and I'm still learning. This is my fourth year beekeeping, I believe. Um, I've learned a lot, um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's almost addicting being a beekeeper. And it's just fun. It's a great way uh, to earn a little extra income on your, uh, homestead. And, uh, yeah, I've just enjoyed every minute of it. So if this video has been helpful for you, uh, say hello, leave a comment and, uh, we'll see you in the next video.